Now, whenever we want to write annotation that supports source type, it will be run by the compiler. It will be run by the Java compiler uh, when the compilation happens. Uh, this way we can generate code. So once the project is built, that code is available to the developer to be called. Uh, otherwise, it, it is of no use if, if we generate code and it is not available at, at, uh, at the time of writing code. Our main, uh, main purpose, main focus in this example is to generate a method that developers can use. Uh, in, in, in real life, this would be some sort of method or piece of code that developer has to write again and again. Uh, we, we, we have automated that piece of code by our annotation and by generating code based on that annotation. So in Java, well, while writing run, uh, compile time code, compile time annotation, uh, this is the process that we will follow. We will declare uh, a separate module for annotation and we will declare separate module for processor. So when whenever the Java process the annotation, uh, it will not ship the processor code with the project. It will only ship the generated code with the project. So this is a common practice when writing a compile time processor or compile time annotation that uh, we include annotation as, uh, as a package, as a, as a library dependency, and we include processor as a processor dependency. So it will not be shipped with the, with the final code. Once we have set up our processor module, uh, we need to extend abstract processor class of, of Java API that will allow us to, to perform some operations on annotation. Now, abstract processor class has to be uh, registered in, in a meta resource, in a meta declaration that, that we will see later on when we go into the demo. This, this meta declaration will, will tell the compiler that this class, this abstract processor supports a specific annotation. And in our process method, we will get those elements which are annotated by our compile time annotation. And we will uh, do stuff uh, the way we like to. So we will have to extend abstract processor class. We will have to De declare it in metadata of processor module. Uh, we will have to describe supported annotations uh, with the abstract processor class. So that compiler needs to know that whenever it hits that annotation, it will it will give that object to our abstract processor class that we extend from. And it also needs to show. It also needs to to declare supported Java versions because by default abstract processor or processor module will point to Java 6 and that will result in error if your project is targeting a different Java version. Next thing is we will be also overriding init method of abstract processor class. It will give us few objects that we'll discuss later that uh, that needs to be needs to be aware of environment that we're working with. And finally, the process method, as, we, as, as I already said, that the real, uh, real magic will happen in, in the process method. Since we are talking about code generation, it will be really necessary to mention Java Poet here. What Java Poet does is provide us some useful classes that will help us declare uh, code, code classes. Now, how Java Poet work is, is we will see in in demo, but just to make uh, just to just to make make sure the, the the importance of this library is that it provides us with complete specification of classes. It provides us an elegant way to describe class specifications by chaining the the build by chaining like a builder method, like a builder pat, builder pattern. Uh, especially when we are writing the real code in methods, uh, we can we can chain the call and call build in the end. 
so so that's that's very human readable form and very easier to use uh, when generating code as as opposed to if we were going to write code ourselves by 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 using some some text uh, coding and 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 then ha then handling the filing ourselves so so java poet really comes to the rescue for that and the next thing we will use is element utils element utils is 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 the object provided by the the runtime environment that that will be the processing environment that that is that holds the data about about the class on which we are working with about the packages about the project so in order to generate code we need to be aware of the package also for example if you want to create a class it has to belongs it has to belong to some package so generally if we are generating code for a class we generate code uh, to to the package of that class the difference is this generated code goes into into the built folder so element utils help us identify those packages so the next thing is messenger object this messenger object is going to is is, is going to be very useful for us when we will uh, send messages warning or information messages or logs to the client code or to the to the ide so whenever whenever we want to check something and it is uh, it is not going very well we can we can use the messenger to to, to send the error to the ide uh, java filer is also a java poet class that uh, that is really that is also used to to file that is used to file writing and it and it is really really elegant way to to put the code in in into the file and it uses the the above uh, type specification that we 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 described in in the code to write on in a file so these three element utils messenger and java filer uh, that they're really useful things to to be working with when we generate code next thing is is type specification so what, what type specification is uh, it is a type spec class provided by java poet uh, when we write we are, when we are writing classes we start with a class specification then we we go for the methods and we use method specifications and it, and, and it goes on and on so a type spec can be used to describe class enum or interface that uh, that will hold that this object will hold data for the declaration of class uh, then this class this type specification can hold references to the method specification in our case we will do a very similar thing we will create a class using a type spec then we will create a get method using a method spec and we will then build this spec and pass it to java filer another thing that is worth mentioning here is class name object of java poet most of the time when we are writing annotation processors for generating code the target project is not purely java framework sometimes it's android sometimes it it's spring and sometimes it's java fx so the pure java classes do not recognize some framework classes that the that we intended to use in our generated code so what class name object does is that there's there is a special way to to initialize this class name object that way when we use class name in our in our generated code in our specification of method this class name when written on a file will automatically use the import statements of those classes in that way the classes that are not available in our processor because of their pure java nature those classes will be used in generated code and import statements will also be added and if there is an issue when the code is generated 
it will generate error at build time. In our example of Android, we will use classes like bundle and classes like fragment to use in our generated code. For that purpose, Java, the pure Java does not know what a fragment is, what an Android bundle is. So we will use class name to include those classes in our code, in our generated code. In reality, processor will never include those classes. The generated code will run and that code will import those real classes.